Hello, it's Ren Presents Time. I'm your host, Ren, and I guess I've been proceeding from a flawed set of preconceived notions regarding characters and action movies and what people want from an action hero. I always thought that a cool hero uh, starts off a movie or a book one way, ends up another, undergoes an arc of some sort, goes on a quest, Perhaps treats with the learned and the local shamans, gets some sort of mentoring, gets a call to action, faces an imminent threat, defeats the threat, if all goes well, and is triumphant at the end of the story, and is probably significantly changed from the beginning of the story to the end. That's what I always thought a good action character is composed of and whether this character be male or female it shouldn't matter that's that's part of the human experience apparently we're not dealing with humans necessarily when we talk about alt-left clintonista third wave feminists i just i don't get it as we see in any number of media we go from Rey in Star Wars to Captain Marvel and the the infamous term that's always thrown about the Mary Sue just the invincible perfect female character which seems like it's a bad piece of writing but apparently that is the ideal condition for a feminist hero so let's quickly discuss feminist female power levels and how they relate to the world around them so way at the bottom the power chart we have men the men of the gillette era the men standing at their barbecue watching their sons harass and bully other people that's at the bottom and a little farther up the scale in this fictitious power level we have the mad titan himself thanos who with his infinity gauntlet can snap away half the life in the universe but he's just a little bit above the gillette men and then way farther up the feminist power scale we have the wow condition wow that is powerful who uh, falls into that category i'd say uh the atomic blonde jennifer garner and peppermint they're in the wow category higher up we have holy crap and who follows in that i'd say the angelina jolie tomb raider is in the holy crap range yeah maybe ripley is is gets a holy crap sarah connor yeah holy crap or maybe she might be down in the wow because she actually fell in love with a guy and that 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 deducts from her power level and then above that we have oh my god who follows in the oh my god range out oh, clearly it's ray from star wars because she was she you know you see her on the screen you see her mastering the force in seconds you see her kicking the ass of a, of a sith lord wannabe oh my god that is power and then at the very tippy top you have it's inconceivable and who is in that inconceivable range clearly it's captain marvel because there is no peer to captain marvel it's inconceivable what this woman can do. She's got Nick Fury so intimidated he can't even pick up a gun. He's just holding a cat throughout the climactic fight scenes. Let the cat do the fighting because Nick can't because he can't find his meat and two veg. That's the power level of the modern feminist. One that's perfect from the beginning beginning of the story there is no arc there is no parabola of rise and ascent they already start in the stratosphere the only thing holding them back is the the patriarchy the men around them letting them know that you know they're just a chick and they can't do x y and z but by the end of the end of the movie by golly they've kicked some ass and let them know just how wonderful they are i mean ray starts off tough force awakens stays tough needs no training needs no help kicks uh kylo ren's ass i mean what does she even need to see see luke skywalker for in the first place why is she even going on this quest she's a scrap seller 
a, a scavenger who hasn't had any heroic notions before, well, why now is she undertaking this, this quest to an island to see some old guy? But that's neither here nor there. Captain Marvel, she was plucky and tough and no, never say die. She was awesome from the get-go. She just had to overthrow the patriarchal yoke just to let everyone see just how badass she is and pretty much skates through the later half of the movie. Nobody lays a glove on her. And that seems to be what the what feminists want. You know, just a, a completely invincible character that undergoes no change, no growth, is awesome at the beginning, is awesome at the end. The only significant change is that uh, all the men around her now know that she is essentially invincible. No discernible human emotions, no empathy, no no indications of love. To love someone, especially a guy, would be the ultimate of weaknesses. You have to be stoic, unsmiling, and if you, if you do have any sort of relationship, it better be with another woman. So basically, this is an idea. Basically, you're talking about Zeus with a pair of boobs. And that's the, that's the archetype that seems to be what's being pushed in this day and age. A couple of years ago in my books that I write in book number nine in the Shadow Tech Goddess series called Stenabel, and the main character is a girl. In the previous books, this same character was a guy, it was Paymaster Stenstrom, but in this book, he's a girl. It's an alternate universe, and this person is a mystical being known as the Kadar Gamain, who exists in every universe in the infinite nature of the of the multiverse. And usually, people and animals and such only exist in a limited number of universes but the Kadar Gamain exists in all of them and they can exist as male, female, alien, animal, you name it, just depends. And in this particular universe he is a girl. As I wrote this story I determined I wasn't gonna do her any favors. I was gonna give it to her both barrels. She was gonna feel the lash as she progresses through her particular arc. Beginning of the story, she's a mess. She's in prison. She's broke. She was a laughing stock. She could probably escape from prison if she so wanted with the various skills she has, but chooses not to because prison is a nice, safe place to hide from her problems. She gets freed by a mysterious benefactor and sent on a dangerous mission to gather information and she does it she really doesn't have any choice and she's being offered a lot of money and the restoration of her house that she's trying to preserve so she does it and along the way she fails as often as she succeeds she needs the help of her friends around her she comes to value their presence and their counsel. She learns from her friends. She learns to have faith in her skills and abilities. And by the end of the book, she is a much better adventurer, much more formidable adventurer, much better person than she was at the beginning. She changed. Her arc is complete. But along the way, she about buys it several times and when i wrote it i thought that's what that is the most even-handed and fair treatment of a female character that i can think of to give her just to empower her to take a pounding to be human she's not perfect she's not wonderful just out of the gates that she needs help from her friends from the people who love her who give her a good kick in the rear when she needs it a little tough love goes a long way and that's what we get in this story and i thought i'm gonna show her respect by not treating her any differently than i treat my male characters the male counterparts of her they take it on the chin too but and i've gotten you know various uh, comments from people who've read it and they when i get one from a self-described feminist they hate her because this character's terrible she's a a a, a a a figment of the rape culture she is a a pawn of the patriarchy she had 
boyfriends at some point. She was in love once to a guy, and that's unacceptable. You know, it's a big step backwards for women, and I, I, I don't see how that's the case. Why is that a step backward? That she is a human being, that she has missteps, that she faces adversity, but manages to overcome it and better herself in the process. I don't see what's wrong with that. I don't see how that's a that's a weakness. That's a strength. That's a virtue. Whether you're a girl or a guy, adversity is something every human faces every day. You know, and even though the stories I write are whacked out science fiction stories, the human element is still there. They have the same set of feelings that I do and that the reader does. It should be relatable by that reckoning. But no, feminists, there was no pleasing those people. They wanted her a man-killing machine right out of the gates. Didn't want her to face one second of hardship. Didn't want her to have any sort of indecision, any doubt, any weakness at all. No emotions, no hesitations, just balls to the walls, full on ass kicking. Well, that's not going to happen. That's a terrible character. God, in, in 15 years when we look back at this time, I wonder what people would think. Whether you're on the right or the left or wherever you happen to position yourself. You know, what were we thinking? How did we survive? Boy, that was a that was a heck of a time. Anyways, this is Ren Presents. I'm your host, Ren, and to all the people who actually write decent character arc, a hero's arc, I salute you. Stay strong.